Hi, my name is Matty Razwan. In this video, I'll be showing you some of the valuable capabilities that VMAP has to offer with the Free Bodies tool. Users can quickly create a load from a global model analysis set and insert that load from into a local model for a more detailed and finer mesh analysis. Just a little bit about us, Ceratec is an industry leader in the PLM or product lifecycle management space and we do a variety of services projects and support Siemens products. We have more than 50 dedicated engineers ranging in various disciplines. Our headquarters is in Mission Viejo but we have engineers across the United States. Uh, a little bit about me, uh, my name is Mehdi Razwan and I'm primarily focused on stress analysis and dynamics. Some of the projects that I've worked on include analyzing spacecraft booster assemblies and dynamics of spacecraft systems. The tools that I'm most familiar with include NX NASTRAN, FEMAP, and SimCenter. For design tools, I've used NX, Solid Edge, SolidWorks, and AutoCAD. If you guys want to reach me, my email is shown as well as my phone number. Uh, please don't hesitate to give us a call and see how we can't help you solve any of your complexities. Um, and with that, let's get started with the agenda. In this video, I want to hopefully convey a brief understanding of what Grid Point Force is in NASTRAN and how FEMAP users can quickly convert an interface load from an analysis result to focus on a localized model. For a better understanding of Grid Point Force, it's always best to consult the NASTRAN user guide. Um, here, I have an image from the user guide that shows the output file print. If requested, NASTRAN will calculate forces and moments acting on each grid point in the global coordinate systems. Users can quickly turn that on in the Analysis Manager when creating an analysis in FEMAP. Now, it's also important to keep in mind that grid point force balance is only computed for linear stiffness elements, the sum of applied loads and thermal loads and single point constraint forces. So why would a user be interested in grid point force? Well, in a lot of models, you know, you have several elements that are connected to that single grid point. And when that happens, analysts may want to know how those loads are distributed among the elements at that common grid point. This is especially important um, just to do as a uh, fail-safe check to see if elements are in the correct orientation, for example. They also might want to know what those loads are at the grid points so that they can run another analysis using those loads at those grid points. And that's what we'll demonstrate here today. And with that, let me just bring up this model that I have here of a aircraft fuselage or part of an aircraft fuselage. Now, this model is relatively small compared to what a full-size model would be for an airplane but the tools that I'm here going to show you here today are applicable to those models as well. In this model, I've pre-made groups of each section uh, as shown on the left here. I have the skin, the frame, the stringers, a reinforcement ring, and a um, sheet that I call the window double. I'm interested in seeing how those beam elements that I've placed on the window reinforcement ring, if I highlight here, uh, will react um, in this model. If I want to see those elements and the reactions at those points but in a more localized model I can quickly do that and I'll show you that here. Uh, for the sake of time I've already ran this analysis and I've already gone ahead and created a free body that includes elements as shown. I want to see what the force will be coming off of this edge so that I can insert it into my localized model that I have here. As you can see, the mesh density of this model is much finer than the mesh density here. I'm going to go ahead and use that free body that I've used, that I've created. Let me turn that on here just to show you that the moments and the forces are listed per grid point based on my analysis. I have a 20 psi pressure load that's pushing from the inside out of this airplane and I want to apply that onto my localized model as shown here. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click on model, load from free body. At this juncture, I'm going to go ahead and press the multi model option down here. Oh, my mistake. And select from which model that I want to bring in it from. Uh, in this case, you always want to have that model open before you go ahead and do so, and you want to make sure that the free body is also listed in that model. As you can see, I only have one free body in this model, but had there been more free bodies, I would be able to select them in this uh, in this list here. So go ahead and click on that, and I also want to use the moments, and then click next. You'll notice that you'll get a a message from FEMAP that will indicate that the free body is not in equilibrium and that's exactly what we expect. Go ahead and press yes. From there, uh, FEMAP will indicate how you want to create the load. I'm going to be using a rigid element. This will uh, create a um, sum, of, sum of forces and moments on that rigid element and then apply that uh, load connecting to all of those nodes that I've chosen. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, user defined and select those nodes by quickly uh, selecting right here. If I press OK, I'm going to get another option here that says that the highlighted nodes conflict with one or more of the so source node IDs. I'm going to go ahead and say yes here because I know that, that would, um, that's what I want. Go ahead and press OK. I'm not going to edit the rigid element connectivity. I'm just going to accept the defaults. Um, and from there, if I go ahead and turn on my loads, you will see that those loads are now applied to those nodes as shown. And I can then take that model and run an additional analyses for this more refined, higher density mesh model. If you guys have any questions regarding this, please feel free to give us a call. In summary, uh, it's always a good idea to use GP Force and NASFRAN so that you can fail check to see how the uh, load path is in your model. And you can quickly convert an interface free body into a load in a localized model. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to give us a call or send us an email. And thank you again for attending. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook or Twitter um, and like us on LinkedIn. Thank you.